this is the Creality 3D Ender 3 3D printer. A lot of threes, I know. It has a 220mm by 220mm by 250mm print bed, which equals about 8.5 by 8.5 by a little under 10 inch build volume. It features a heated build plate, a Bowden style extruder, it uses a micro SD card for transferring files. You can also use a USB cable. It's controlled with an LED screen and a push button rotating knob. It comes with a spare nozzle, Bowden connector, a bunch of tools and spare screws. That's important because there is some assembly required. It comes in about 20 different parts and you're going to have to screw all of those together. Now there's no soldering or any other complex assembly. It's just screwing together parts and plugging in cables, but it should take you maybe one to two hours to assemble. Let's start with the upsides. I really appreciate the solid construction of this 3D printer. It's all metal. The screws are long and go in nice and deep and tight. This printer definitely feels like it's going to hold together for a long time. Also, the assembly instructions are quite clear, guiding you through all the steps of putting all of it together. I did have a few hiccups along the way, but they were my fault. They were things that were listed in the instructions that I just missed. Moving on to some smaller things that I still find are really helpful. You often have to adjust a 3D printer's build plate with little knobs or screws. The Ender 3 has very large knobs that are very, very easy to move and adjust. I find leveling this bed to be the easiest of any 3D printer I own. Also, the LED screen is very well designed. They packed a lot of information in here and it's all relevant. It includes the extruder temperature and the heated build plate temperature, both current and commanded, a progress bar, a, uh, a print time, all sorts of different elements in there, and none of it feels wasted. Also, the on-off switch is on the right-hand side of the printer as you're facing it. Now, it seems like a simple thing, but a lot of the 3D printers I own have the on-off switch on the back, which means if something goes catastrophically wrong with a print, something's moving in a, in a wrong way or it's grinding against something, you have to reach around the back and scrabble to turn it off. The on-off switch being on the right side and still kind of recessed between the LED screen and the power cable means you're not going to accidentally press it, but it's easier to get to in case of an emergency. Now let's move on to the downsides. I'm starting with a pretty significant one. I got the 3D printer working very quickly, got some very nice prints out of it. I'll show you some details here on those. But then after only four prints, I got a clog. Now most other 3D printers I've had, it takes a lot longer than that to get my first clog. And I haven't found a way to fix it yet. I swapped out the nozzle, done my normal clog cleaning uh, procedures, and I'm still having a problem so far. I've reached out to Creality 3D, but I haven't received back a uh, word from them yet, but that was just like today that I reached out to them. So a little worrying, but might just be something I've missed. I also had a little bit of difficulty sometimes loading the filament. There are apparently a few little spots in there where the filament can snag. Um, it's one of those things that'll just take you a few more moments to move the filament around to actually get it all the way inside. Once it clears that first uh, section, it slides in very smoothly, but it just takes a little bit of fiddling. The included micro SD card comes with several PDFs showing you how to set up your software. And while they do have a lot of information in them, I was confused by finding that there were two different PDFs showing different ways of setting up Cura uh, in terms of a slicer software. And that's a good default, but the settings were different in each PDF, uh, particularly the attraction settings and travel speed were different in each one, and there was no indication as to which one was better. So that was just a little confusing. I do have one very fiddly complaint with the LED screen. Once you get into any of the sub-menus and start doing things like manually extruding some filament, the screen resets back to the main screen pretty quickly after only maybe 10-15 seconds of inaction. Uh, this means that if you're 
trying to figure out a problem and for example you have it heated up and you want to extrude a little bit and check some things it will often then default back to the the main screen you'll have to then dive back into the menus to get back to that uh, particular uh, uh, control so not a big deal and there are not a lot of menus in this so it's going to take you very little time to do so but just a little annoying finally some fyi to replace the nozzle which you have to do commonly on any 3D printer, you have to undo two screws on the uh, cooling fan and move that over to the side. This isn't a problem. Uh, some 3D printers have immediate access to it. Some have the uh, cooling fan over it. it. It's a reasonable design decision. Just be aware you'll have to pull out these two screws. It's very quick and easy. Just takes a few seconds per screw. Just be aware of that. The control knob does take a little getting used to. It tends to move in these large segments, which can uh, go further past the exact point where you want. But if you do move it very slowly, it will adjust to that exact positioning. So it is very easy to start moving it and go way past where you expect. Um, but I don't think this is a problem. It's just one of those things where it's how the control is designed to let you move very quickly then give you fine control. So just be aware of that. Finally, something that just kind of surprised me, the filament loads right next to one of the rods on the printer. So it's almost brushing up against that rod. I would expect there to be potentially some issues there for the plastic to rub against the rod uh, and then that could possibly uh, modify the filament as it's going into the printer there is a little bit of space next to it but it's one of those things that just kind of stood out to me that could just be me though and now the big question should you buy one well that's a complicated question the reality is that the ender 3 has everything it needs to be a 3d printer i.e there are no big surprises in the design that i can see everything comes together solidly um, everything about the printer seems like a really solid 3d printer that nozzle clog has me a little concerned, but again, that could just be one unit. It could just be my inexperience uh, or something just I've done wrong. Who knows? So I'll keep an eye on that. Um, otherwise, yeah, there's some things I really like about the printer. A few niggles, but those are more my annoyances than things that you're necessarily going to be frustrated by. Um, and especially for the price, the Ender 3 certainly seems like something worth checking out.